Good morning. So breaking 80. Well, if you're shooting 85 down towards 80 and you can't get across the line, there could well be three or four possibilities about why you're struggling to do that. The first one might be that you never warm up and you just simply drop too many shots in the first five holes to give you a chance and then you're playing catch up and then you're trying to force a score and it all goes wrong. So try warming up properly first. Get here an hour early. That might help. 375 yards and I'm going with a five wood. One thing I've learned over the years, I didn't hit that well, one of the things I've learned over the years is it's not the length of the hole that determines my tee shot, it is the width. And even when you're playing well, you are going to hit awful shots. My very best is 69 on 6,500 yard par 72 included three disgusting shots. And here's how we break 80. We put an awful lot of effort into these. Missing these adds up over a round. One of the things I see as players get better, they're hitting the ball further and they're hitting it straighter and they're shooting around about 82 at that sort of number. They start getting more aggressive. They start trying to use the driver to beat the hell out of the golf course. And you just can't do that. And then you're normally doing it on holes that they really shouldn't be doing it. So they finish the round of golf and it'd be, what did you shoot today? Oh, another 82. But if I hadn't have done this, that and the other on those three holes, it would have been 77. It's a common story. It's the same for going for smelly flags. You know, once upon a time you hit a pitching wedge over a nasty bunker or water to a tight flag, you put it to three feet, you made a birdie, and you think you can do it every time. Well, you can't. Because if you could hit your driver long and straight every time, and you could hit your wedges into three feet every time, I'd be watching you on telly. But I'm not, am I? You've shot yet another 82 by being too aggressive with the driver and your wedges going for tight flags. Another thing that I know is wind. When you're playing in the wind and it's strong enough to really affect how your ball flies, it is much more difficult to score and you're going to make mistakes in the wind. I've clubbed up and this just sailed through it. So I'm in an impossible position and chipping onto a downslope. The chances of me getting this right are rather slim. And the hard part is accepting your bogeys. If you're breaking 80, you are going to make some bogeys today. So you have to accept the bogeys and keep level-headed about it. You can't be going, oh no, here it goes again. You've got to keep level-headed. You've also got to keep to your game plan. So it's out with the four iron. As usual, this is not the hole for pushing on. If you're going to make a birdie, it's going to be with the wedge and the putter. You're not going to do it with your driver. So I think as long as you can accept the bogeys, even if they're early bogeys in the round, you think, oh no, I've dropped three shots, I've only got another six, and I've got all this golf course to play yet. You've got to get rid of that feeling, those negative thoughts, and just accept, well, this is one of the bogeys I'm going to make today. I'm going to make some more. I'm going to make some pars. I may even get a birdie or two to cancel out a bogey. 
you've got to be that level-headed about it. One ninety playing one ninety-nine. One of the best things you can have to help you lower your scores is a rangefinder. This one's from from uh, Go 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 Sport. It's called the Zero In. It's the fastest rangefinder I've ever used. Picks up the flag from way out, no problem. Well, in a competition, this is two hundred eight yards. It's a bit of a stretch. In fact, I think I hit three wood on it. But this is one of those holes where nine times out of ten you're going to make a bogey. If you look at your stats over over the year, it's going to be 3.9, 3.95 even. You know, you're going to get one par out of ten, one par out of eleven, even one par out of twenty rounds. So if you can play this hole and take a four and be happy with that four and be glad it's not a five, then you're doing well mentally. And then you move on to another hole, 398, uphill, bit of wind about. The chances of getting a par here are rather slim too. I could try and push and get on this green, but I think that's dangerous, especially out of the rough. But all I'm trying to do is actually get on the same height as the green and look up the green from the left hand side like this. This seems to be to be the better chance of getting the par when I've missed the fairway. Planning to miss a green in the right place is not a negative thing to do, it's a positive thing to do. And I've finished in a position where I could get it up and down. Every course has a hard nine and an easy nine, even if they're exactly the same length and exactly the same par. You're going to have a nine that just plays harder than the other nine. That's life. So when you're on the hard nine, what I try and do is not do anything stupid. I know I'm going to make bogeys on the hard nine. And there's nothing I can do about that. So I try and keep my mistakes to a minimum. And I certainly stay away from hero shots. Because there aren't really any hero shots. They're just stupid shots. So it's a question of navigating the hard nine as best you can without doing anything dumb. You know, one of the things that uh, can get in your way of going lower is uh, this thing. At the end of 99, I got to a handicap of eight. And in 2008, when I went on my first big golf holiday, my handicap was eight. 
See, in practice rounds like this, I could, I could break targets so, so easily. On a Saturday in a match play against another golf club, I could go really low. I've even shot level par off the back tees on a par 72. And then the very following morning, I was seven over the front, relaxed because my card had gone, shot level par round the back, and was cut the grand total of 0.2. In fact, I probably wasn't cut at all because I think the standard scratch of the course was one under par, so that seven over the front level back would have been nothing. I would have got cut nothing. See, we get in our own way, and I got in my own way for years. I could not solve the dilemma. Now, it's a different thing to drop all your shots on the front nine, relax, and then play the kind of golf that you're, you know you're capable of playing. It's different to when you play the front nine like a blinder, and then around the back nine, you get tight, and you drop all your handicap on the back nine. That's a different matter, a different pressure altogether. But it's the same thing, really. It's getting out of your own damn way. And that's why I make these videos. I don't want you stuck on a handicap for nine years, trying desperately to get down. You've got to go through a process to conquer the golf course, conquer yourself. And even on the hard nine, occasionally when you're playing in the wind, you'll eventually get one of these hard holes that's playing downwind. When it is, you can take advantage of that. Not often I'm hitting a nine iron into here, it's normally a six. So we can get away with a par on a hole that we would normally what? bogey. That's how we keep the score ticking over. Well, I think I'm four over. I'm not entirely sure because I don't keep a card. I've got enough to do carrying the camera around. Whatever it is, I could have been one or two shots better. I could also have been one or two shots worse. So I think I've probably scored exactly what I've earned with my swing being a little off. I had a lesson this morning, a practice session, and perhaps I'm too old to do all of that and play 18, don't know. But don't look backwards, look forwards. Don't play the if only game. It doesn't do you any good. What you've scored is what you've scored. If only will not improve the score. There's always a question on short par fours. Do I leave myself a full wedge or do I try and get as close as I can? I treat them all differently. So on this one, I try and get as close as I can. And I know that my bad drive is long enough to get past the rubbish. So I feel that is my best way of having a birdie chance on this particular hole. There are other short holes on the course where I wouldn't dream of hitting a driver. So it's horses for courses and another couple of inches on the putt. About time. 
under 300 yards, there's no way I'm taking driver up here. Just the hybrid. So breaking 80 is about making good decisions on the shorter holes as well as good decisions on the longer ones. An awful shot and a glorious bounce. But sometimes the golf course does shine a light on you momentarily. But yeah, breaking 80 is about making the right decisions, the right tee clubs. And talking of wrong tee clubs, we're back into the wind here. And you are going to make mistakes in the wind. There's no doubt about that. I thought I was straight into, but it was left to right. I've clubbed up. I've gone long. I've been blown off line by that strong wind. If you can accept your mistakes and take it on the chin, then you'd do a whole lot better than getting rather dramatic yeah. about taking the wrong club or the wrong direction. Now, par fives for me are what I call rest holes. It's a hole that I can easily make a five on, and if I hit two really good shots, I might get a chip and put birdie. Hybrid. Chosen to hit a good shot rather than risk hitting a bad shot with the three wood. Because the par fives here at the Herefordshire are not two shots, a chip and a putt holes. They are both difficult. And that's why they've got the stroke indexes they have. So you may well be used to getting greenside in two on par fives and having a chip and putt birdie and then you come to a par 5 where that is out of the question. Again, it's attitude, it's taking it on the chin. It's understanding that not every par 5 is a birdie hole. Flag is way at the back, so we leave it alone. We take a club that's going to get us into the middle of the green. We certainly do not go after smelly flags at the back. If you've got a hole with a left and a right tee box you may have to do different things. So on the left tee box, it is most definitely a three wood for me. Because with the driver, I feel myself staring at the right hand hedgerow. Then it's down to the lie. Is the lie good enough for a three wood? Yes, it was. I knew it was going to come out low. I knew it was going to run a bit. I'm not sure if I was looking for that before I'd hit it, because it was right into the sun or whether it was just the slope that made it awkward. But I'm short. We don't panic. We can chip. We can putt. We've got those skills. If you're shooting 82, you can chip and putt. Especially if you're willing to leave yourself an uphill putt. Another change. There's a ridge in the fairway I like to get over. I can do that with the three wood, but because of the wind, I've got to use my driver today. So flexibility is a key to breaking 80. Whilst you want a game plan, you should be more than happy to change it according to the conditions, whether the ground is soft, whether the wind is blowing, take a club less, take a club more, Whatever it takes to get that par, I think I need a bigger hole. Well, here we are on the 18th. Not too sure what my score is. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm in a competition on Saturday, so it's back tees, card in my hand and all the pressure that that brings with it. 
So what's the plan for you and I next time we enter a competition and we're trying to beat a particular number? Warm up before we play. Don't be overly aggressive where it certainly isn't warranted. Stick with your game plan. Narrow holes, take less off the tee. Wide holes, take your driver. Leave smelly flags alone. Forget the shot you just played. Concentrate on the next shot. Don't play if only. Don't worry about something that you've just done. Worry about the next shot and get the next shot right. And be patient, wait for it to happen. You can't force a good score. If you and I could force a good score, we'd be on TV, wouldn't we? Cheerio. The flag is directly over the bunker. As much as I would love to finish on a birdie, that hole is smelly. So it's out to the right, use the slope of the ground, bounce it onto the green, and we settle for the par. Maybe next week we're in a better position, oh, wow. the flag isn't behind the bunker, and we can get that closing birdie on a short par four. What's important is putting the effort into these short putts. Don't take it for granted it's going in. So if you can formulate a good game plan, stick to that game plan, warm up, practice your short putts, be patient, don't be overly aggressive, you'll break that 80.